what we want and, and really putting some framework and some structure around that process and how you can really start to connect with who you really are to so that you can determine your, your path. Because when you're working in alignment with who you really are, then everything flows more, more easily. There's no good trying to, to, to push a strategy or a real estate strategy that doesn't suit you, that, doesn't, that, that is, is, isn't in alignment with who you are. You're better off to stick to strategies and to stick to, to processes and, and safety nets and benchmarks and areas and all that kind of stuff when it's in alignment with who, you're, who you are and where you're at. But a lot of people go the other way and go, oh, that's what we want, you know, jump in and, and everything seems so hard and everything seems like, you know, oh, this went wrong and that went wrong and something else happened. And it's because what you're doing is not in alignment with, with who you're really at. So there'll be a little bit of time spent this morning really trying to work out who you really are and what you really want out of your future. Because once you can, once you can crystallise that, once you can, once you can put your, your hands on that and go, that's what I want, that's where I'm at, that's what I'm shooting for, then, then the, the pieces come together more easily. So let's start first up this morning with a bit of a quote from Napoleon Hill. Now, this is, a, this is a quote that I particularly like. The starting point of all achievement is desire. Keep this constantly in mind. Weak desire brings weak results. Just as, small, just as a small amount of fire makes a small amount of heat. And if you think of things in that regard, the more you can connect with your why and, and you know, your, your passion and your desire to make something happen, the easier it happens, the quicker it happens, and the more money you're going to make. I mean, that's, that's the end of it. Your, your result is going to be better. So I'm going to be asking you to really dig deep this weekend to really get to who you are. Now, it's going to be a different thing for everybody. And for a lot of people, it's a place you haven't gone since you were probably two or three. It's a place that we shut down. It's a place that, that busyness and everything else around us takes, us takes us away from. So be open to that and really be open to leaving your egos at the front door. We don't want any of that. Because when, when we, we start to set these goals, if you can connect to it with absolutely everything that you can, you can muster up inside you to make happen, whether it be your time, your thought, your, your, um, your business acumen, your everything to make happen, then everything flows from there. Unfortunately, as I say, we shut down that passionate side of us because we've got to be responsible and we've got to do this and we've got to go to work and we've got to make this happen and we've got to, got to, got to everything. Whereas what we really got to do is focus on us and, and really connect at that childlike level that, as I say, we haven't done. For most of us, we have not done since you were two or three. And that's when it gets, starts to get shut down. So let's start first up. How do we know what we want? How do you get to that point? How do you get to a place where you go, that's what I want, that's me? Whether it be where you want to live, whether it be how you want to live, whether it be the car you want to drive, whether it, you know, it's what you want to do with your time. Now, a lot of this weekend will be focused on that, that, that one question, what do I want? Because even though I say to you guys from the very first one day that you saw me at, the hardest thing that you will ever have to do is put that peg in the sand and go, that's what I want. Now, I give you suggestions around where that should be, about income replacement and levels of, of value of, of, of equity and wealth and all of that kind of stuff. But they're, they're my suggestions. That may or may not sit with you. And what may be your driving force may not be those income figures. It may not be that goal. It may be something more basic. It might be the way you live your life, which is actually more probable than anything to do with money. It's probably more about, about the way 
you can, you can spend your time. And when you get up in the morning, what do you do? You know, your ability to be able to choose whether you go and, you know, help out your neighbour and clean out his gutters or, or, or whether you go and you, um, you know, you, you, you spend your time doing some volunteer work or, or whatever you do with your time or whether, you know what, you lie in a hammock on your back veranda and read a book and don't feel guilty about it. You know, there's going to be all sorts of things and, the, and the, the money and the income replacement and all of those other things that we've been talking about for the rest of everything else that I do is just the tool, the tool. Because when we start, when we start really connecting at a heart level about what you really want, that'll be your driver. It's not actually the money. Up to this point in time, you probably thought it is the money and the income replacement and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's actually not. It's what that money, that tool gives you, what it provides you with, what that means to you from a lifestyle perspective. And when you can, when you can connect with that, the other stuff flows more easily. So how do you know what you want? You know, are you just picking up on my energy and what I think you should want? Because up till this point in time, I've only been suggesting financial stuff. Whereas what's probably more important is all the other stuff. I've been working totally on your conscious. But we make decisions on 90% subconscious and 10% conscious. Whereas everything I've ever done with you guys up to this point in time has been working with that 10%, making that as, as tuned and educated and active and, and motivated as, as I can possibly make it. But that's 10% of your decision-making process. This weekend, we're going to work on the other 90% that actually makes most of our decisions for us. 90% of our decisions are made from our subconscious. So how do we train that? How do, we, how do we control that? Do we need to control that? That's a big word. What, what can we do to gently guide that towards our desired outcome? So these, these are the two links that we're really going to put together this weekend. How can we work on that subconscious and get it at its peak performance so that when you know what you want and you've got that peg in the sand, not only 10% of you is working towards it, but the other 90% is as well. Now, that what do you want, I don't believe you can really determine what you want until you do what I call data sampling. Imagine yourself, you go into a German pub, an Irish pub, and you're a beer drinker. And you go there and you say, I want a beer. And they go, well, we've got this one, we've got that one, we've got little, 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 all these names you've never heard of before in all your life. Or you can have a sampler. So you get a sampler. Now, they're normally not that size glasses, but <laughs> I've had a few samplers in my time. And you have a little taste of all the different beers and you decide which ones you like. And by the end of them, they all taste good. <laughs> So, but it's the same with life. You're like, how do you know what you want? How can you say, well, I want to do this, or I want to be that, or I, I want to do this with my life, or I want that kind of car, or I want to live here, or I want to, I want to ski there, or I want this kind of boat or jet plane or whatever, until you've actually sampled it. I said to my eldest son earlier in the year, just turned 18, first year at uni, and I said to him, okay, I'm kicking you out at Christmas time. Where do you want to go? I've got all these frequent flyer points. You've got to get out there and have a look at the world. You know, get out and see some stuff. Get out and experience some good stuff, some bad stuff, some whatever stuff. So, you know, go somewhere. I don't care where you go. You're, you've got two months off, two and a half months off from you. Just go. Go and, go and sample. You guys have got to do the same thing. And then... That doesn't happen unless you allocate time for it to happen. It doesn't happen unless you say, allocate a certain amount of time every day to really focus on that stuff. We as Australians don't think. 
We don't. We don't spend enough time thinking. Just allocating a certain amount of time to think. We don't. We get busy, you know, and that, that subconscious kind of takes over and we breathe automatically and we eat this and we go to there and we drive there and you didn't even realise that, you know, that the traffic in between time and then you go to work and this happens and then that happens and you're on remote control for most of your day. When do you ever, you think about it in your life, when do you pull out 15 minutes a day and go, right, this is me time, I'm thinking. We don't. We sit in front of that bloody idiot box and we get mind-numbingly bombarded with crap, which is somebody else's projection of their crap. Why do we let that come into our, our conscious? You know, why do, why do we, we let all of the... Oh, I could go on for here. <laughs> but all, the, all the, the, the crappy, gossipy... BS stuff that's out on television, why do we let that influence us? Why do we let that be the, the, the stuff that we're allowing into our force field, into our subconscious? Because that's affecting the decisions we make, the attitudes we have, the processes that we go through. Turn it off and spend 15 minutes a day just thinking. Just thinking about you. Get the mind chatter out, of, chatter out of there. Get that stuff gone so that you just spend that time thinking about you. Now, I don't care how busy you are, you can give yourself 15 minutes. If you reckon you don't have a spare 15 minutes, get out of bed an extra 15 minutes earlier. And now you've got an extra 15 minutes. That whole process of really spending time on you, 15 minutes out of a whole day is not much to ask, but that 15 minutes will do more for you and your future than anything else you will do all day. It is the most powerful time for you to really be the everything that you can be, should be, want to be. 15 minutes, that's it. And spend the rest of your day data sampling. I don't mean go to a German pub and try all the beers, but I mean just go out and in every part of your day a car goes past. Do I want one of them? Do I not want one of them? You know, do I want that on my vision board? Do I not? An area, you hear about a, an area on getaway or something. You know, do I want to go there? Do I not? Do I want to live there? How do I, how's that lifestyle work out? Is that, is that what I want in my lifestyle? You know, do I want the rural thing? Do I want the canal front thing? Do I want the suburban thing? What do I want? We don't spend enough time actually looking at that stuff or thinking about that stuff. Now, I don't care whether you call it the peg in the sand, your wants, your goals, your focus, your intention, it's all the same thing. All of you will have filled out the peg in the sand journal, haven't we? Very good. And if you haven't, give yourself a smack right now.